Guys, welcome to On Blast with MG. Today we're gonna do the oil change on the uh, 2017 Lexus GX 460. Got it brought it over to my mechanic, Salas. Uh, goes by Fidel. He's got a mobile service. Also, he's got a location as well, so you can bring it in if your um, mobile is not convenient for you. So we're gonna go gonna go through the day and show you guys how to do an oil change. And what is different about this particular oil change is the fact that I'm going to be installing a Fumoto drain valve so I will never have to drain the oil by taking the uh, uh, drain plug out what this thing does and I'll show you guys in a little bit you install it just like uh, you put it through there thread it in through uh, to where the drain plug used to be and ultimately you can just be able to switch this over and drain the oil right through the bottom opening without having to take it off makes it a lot easier and a lot cleaner so we're gonna install that today and show you guys how to do it uh, again it's called a Fumoto valve <laughs> yeah that's true all right we're getting the tires off we're gonna rotate them today too while we're while we got it up on the jack show you guys how it looks underneath um, what are you gonna have to take off in order to get to the oil change, uh, the filter and the uh, drain plug? Well, we're gonna take a look at the brakes, see how those look, rotate the tires. Should be always part of your uh, oil change routine, especially for these cars that have uh, 10,000 mile intervals. Hey guys, the easiest way to check your brakes is take the wheels off. You know, you could definitely tell from the outside if you're looking in, obviously right down in there, you could see uh, how much pad you have left. But it's much easier if you got the wheel off, especially on the Lexus. So in this particular case, you can see the brakes are pretty good. Going underneath the car, in order to change the oil, all that's gonna come down. There's a front skid plate, a little rear, a little, uh, there's two skid plates that's gotta come off. There's one. Four bolts on that one? Yep. Four bolts on the on the back one. One. Two. Three. Four bolts on the front one. And this drops down. I got a little hook there, nice. That gives you access to the bolt. And the oil filter. The oil filter right there. And the uh, drain bolt. Now we're gonna be replacing it with the Fumoto valve. There you go. Basically four bolts for the front one and it drops down just like that. Four bolts for the rear one and it comes all the way off on the ground. There it goes. It says it takes about 8.2 or thereabouts quarts of oil. Yep. In this case, we're gonna be using uh, zero weight 20, mobile one, full synthetic. That's what it calls for. With a Lexus oil filter, part number 04152YZZA3. All right, so we got a new gasket. Now we're going to install the Fumoto valve. Just the same way you screw in your uh, old drain plug, but instead now you're going to have a Fumoto valve. There it goes. That does it. All right guys, so we installed the Fumoto oil valve. There it is. It's got this uh, neat little lever to the side of it. You push it in and out, and that's all you gotta do to drain your oil next time you do oil change. So really convenient, well-priced Fumoto oil valve. There you go. Now we're gonna take the filter off and change that out.
might be a good time to stop. All right, so we got the filter out. Now we're gonna take the filter and throw the old one away. You gotta take the seal, remove it. There you go. We're gonna put the new filter right on top and the seal around it into that nice little groove right above the uh, screw uh, things, whatever they are, the thread. And then you stick it right back in. Hand tighten it so that you don't miss the threads. And then uh, kind of get in there with your tool again and uh, get it nice and snug. It is pretty tight in there, isn't it? Alright guys, the Fumoto valve has this little piece of plastic with a groove on one side that fits right above, right onto the, just like that, and it keeps it in place. Another level of security so this doesn't accidentally get bumped down. In this case, this thing is all covered anyways, but in your case it may not be, so it'll help to have, give you some peace of mind. Alright, there it goes. I'll give you guys a quick look at the mod I did last week. Um, it's a pretty simple do-it-yourself at home. I installed this uh, hitch right here which is uh, got off of Amazon for about 60 bucks. Just goes right on the bumper with four pretty decent sized bolts. One, two, three, and four. And it mounts right up underneath the bumper, really close to the spare tire, as you can see in the picture. And it uh, handles about 5,000 pounds with a uh, tongue weight of 500 pounds. So not too, not too bad. And then you could plug in to you know trailer bra trailer brakes and things if you have the electrics installed for this you definitely can uh, plug in your brakes and trailer tow up to uh, 5,000 pounds with this particular one and if you wanted to get a real I don't say real but if you wanted to get a full duty uh, towing hitch then it would definitely attach it would, has some flies that come out and attach the frame to make it a little bit uh, to actually go to the full towing potential of this car which is about 6,500 pounds so but this will do me fine could attach of course you know bike carriers and storage things onto the back of it or you could do some towing so it's a good addition good mod all right something to note at least on the 2017 gx 460 there are no points that you could add grease to the uh you know the tie rods and all that stuff they're they are greaseless they are designed to apparently um not have to be greased i don't see any points to add grease of course if you guys know something different you know definitely uh let me know but it's the same story on this axle to that axle no points to add grease nowhere that could be found all right guys final step of the oil change is the you know add the oil 8.2 quarts or thereabout of zero weight 20 full synthetic oil in my case i'm using the mobile one full synthetic and uh, take a good look around the cabin now with the motor bay and make sure you got enough uh, brake fluid and the whole deal all right guys one other quick thing i want to talk to you guys about is uh these oem roof crossbars they're really easy to install um, only thing you got to be careful of, you got to make sure you attach the forward, make sure the arrow always points forward. The bars come pre-marked with a forward sticker on there, which you can tell where it is right now, but it's right in there somewhere. And make sure you get an equal distance, about 700 millimeters between the front and the back. Torque them nice. And it comes with a pre a torque wrench pre um, with your purchase and these um, 
get attached here and there's a hook that hooks right underneath the um, underneath this roof rail they see there's a little space right there there's a little hook that goes slides right underneath and then you could tighten it down so a really easy install 170 pounds load capacity spread evenly across them and makes for a good platform to you know maybe add a cargo box or even a even a roof basket but of course I know there are better um, ones out there and eventually I'm gonna go for a full roof rack that attaches to the main points there there and the third one back here it just uh, tends to you know it's gonna give you a lot more weight capacity you could put a rooftop tent on there and a bunch of other things so but for now this will do fine they look nice they don't make a lot of noise they're very aerodynamic and uh, they work really well for what they're intended for 